welcome. Welcome to you all to our Sunday worship. I'm here in Strontian Parish Church. You are all at home as we continue to work our way through this time of lockdown and the easing of restrictions. We hope that in line with Scottish Government and church guidance, we might be able to gather in our church buildings again mid to late August, maybe into September. I know many of you have been enjoying the freedom to worship whenever suits you. And certainly our online worship is something that's here with us for a while. We come together from our different places. We come to worship our God. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. If you would say the words in the bolder type. Remembering when we could gather as a congregation, we worship now in our own homes. Remembering how Jesus drew the crowds, we worship knowing he draws us still in solidarity. Remembering how Christ fed the hungry, we worship now for food for the soul, each solitary one of us, a part of that glorious, noisy throng. Let us pray. God of miracle and God of every day, may we see you now healing, feeding, teaching, serving through ordinary people whom you call to be your body in the world today. We thank you that you reveal your love in those around us and that you even enable us to step up to be Christ for one another. Lord, forgive us for the times when we cannot be bothered, the times we look to our own comfort first and forget that your command is to love one another. Forgive us and help us to do better. God, in Jesus, you gave us the perfect example. May we keep on learning from him and may we become imitators of him until we too are sought out by others as people of peace and of love 
in the name of God, who is love. Amen. When Jesus heard the news about John, he left there in a boat and went to a lonely place by himself. The people heard about it, so they left their towns and followed him by land. Jesus got out of the boat, and when he saw the large crowd, his heart was filled with pity for them, and he healed those who were ill. Let's pause for a moment there as we reflect that when Jesus heard that his cousin John had been killed, he wanted to take some time to be alone. He wanted space to mourn, but everyone wanted a piece of him. Often we don't know the, the backstory. We only know our needs and our wants. May we have compassion for all the backstories that we may never hear. And may we tread cautiously in our encounters with others, allowing for the possibility that we tread on broken dreams and shattered hopes. May we be gentle, may we be kind, making space for one another. Back to the story from Matthew's Gospel. That evening, his disciples came to him and said, it is already very late and this is a lonely place. Send the people away and let them go to the village to buy food for themselves. They don't have to leave, answered Jesus. You yourselves, give them something to eat. All we have here are five loaves and two fish, they replied. Then bring them here to me, Jesus said. He ordered the people to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven and gave thanks to God. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. Everyone ate and had enough. Then the disciples took up 12 baskets full of what was left over. The number of men who ate was about 5,000, not counting the women and children. Amen. Good morning. How are you today? I don't know whether you can hear it at all, but in the background at the moment, our fire is crackling away. It's only morning, but it's cold morning, so I thought I'd light the fire. Having a fire going in the background and feeling all cosy, it's nice then to hear stories. And that's what we think of the parables of Jesus as, stories. Let me tell you a story. There was once a king who ruled over people and courts in a city that was in turn ruled over by a foreign empire. Had it been today, his family and their magnificent palace would have been featured in Hello and through the tabloids and social media. Their various activities would have fed the seemingly insatiable appetite of public interest. Held up in public like that, much as he mimicked the ways of the ruling empire, many of the people in his lands might have aspired to live in a similar way. Just as many people across the world today look to their leaders as role models and as influencers. Now, this king held a huge party. He invited all his friends, all his officials, those he thought he could impress. And at that party, he showcased all he thought his guests would like to see and experience. The king's excesses reflected his power and his wealth, his authority to do whatever he wanted, and especially to display his values and his attitudes. Food, drink, 
dancing girls, anything you wanted. And when his daughter-in-law, who danced for the drunken and stuffed guests, asked to be rewarded for doing so, the king gave her what she requested, the head of a prisoner. This king was so happy to oblige, he could do anything. Now this prisoner was a person who had dared to suggest that the king was misusing his power and authority, dared to criticise the king and remind him of his responsibility towards the welfare of ordinary people. And so at this magnificent feast, the bloody head of this troublesome critic was paraded in front of the guests. And the king felt all that more important. The attention was focused on him and his ego was bolstered by watching the reaction of his guests. Meanwhile, meanwhile, out in the countryside was the cousin of the dead man. He wanted to be alone for a while. This man had dedicated his life to living by values and attitudes that were so very different from those being lived out at the palace. This man reached back into the holy books and reminded people that there were other ways to live. In his presence, people felt welcomed as themselves, the hungry, those with little to give, those who were suffering in any way. This man helped them and assured them that they mattered and that they too were valued. All were welcomed, just as they were. No pretense, no dressing up, no need to stoke the ego of this man. The comparison was striking and ordinary people flocked to this man. And even in his bereavement, he opened his heart to them, inviting them to bring their problems, their sick, the widows, the children and those in need. He healed and he welcomed those rejected by society. He taught and they listened, although they didn't always understand what he said. But they wondered about the meaning of what he was doing, what he was saying and who he was. The way he lived his life, his values and attitudes caused them to look at what was happening around them and wonder which way of living was best. The seed of something had been sown, but what was it? Over the last few weeks, three weeks to be exact, we've been looking at some of the teachings of this man. It was Jesus. Jesus who taught using what were on the surface thought to be stories, but were actually so much more. These parables were and are not only moral and ethical tales, but more importantly and deeper, these stories, these parables are a way of telling people that in Jesus, God's kingdom had arrived. Using everyday language and images like farmers sowing seeds or women making bread, Jesus told stories that puzzled. Those who heard the teachings and dismissed them for one reason or another, they were too difficult to understand, meaningless, they couldn't be bothered working it out. And there were those who decided to listen, to really listen, and to allow the teachings to rumble around in their heads and the thoughts and to be worked on and worked out eventually. Perhaps Jesus was living in a new way. Perhaps this announcement of God's kingdom was for real. Jesus focused attention not on himself, but on God's kingdom, right there in front of them. Here was the living example of how people would be in a kingdom in which there would be welcome, there would be healing, and there would be justice for all. This wasn't something for the future. In front of them was a hope for now. And watching Jesus, accepting his teachings, following his values and attitudes led people then and today too to question how they live. If I become a follower of Jesus, how will these values and attitudes speak to me? How do I understand what Jesus is doing? 
through his stories, through these parables, Jesus sowed seeds of hope for a different future. N.T. Wright, a commentator and theologian, puts it this way. These parables are expressions of Jesus' shocking announcement that God's kingdom was arriving on earth as in heaven. The contrast between the party at the palace and the picnic in the pasture brought these values and attitudes into focus. And that contrast continues today and it is the responsibility of those who have become the followers of Jesus to live in such a way that it is evident that we are people of God's kingdom, actively live, living for others as well as for ourselves. No one else can do this for us. We may feel like the least in the world, but so did those listeners, those early Jews. In God's kingdom, it is the least that were the starter yeast in the bread, the seeds in the soil of everyday life, the little lad who shared his dinner. Which kingdom are you part of? Which kingdom will you decide to be part of? Fear, power for its own sake, greed, greed for self? Or will you be part of a kingdom where the values are sharing and justice and hope and love. Jesus asks us to decide. So it is your decision. Which set of values will you live by? For Jesus and God's kingdom, love wins. Amen. We bring to God our prayers for others and for ourselves. God, when we are frightened, give us courage. When we are disturbed, bring us calm. When we sit in darkness, show us the beginnings of the dawn. When we want to retreat and be quiet, nudge us back to bring life to others. When we are tempted to hoard what we have, open our hands to share. God, again and again, remind us that we have power, power to heal the earth and its people. May we use that power in love and service as Christ showed us. Lord, surprise us with glimpses of you at work around us, making all things new. May we yearn to be part of that, working alongside you to heal creation with you. God of the universe, all our prayers and all our thoughts we bring to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. And continuing in a spirit of prayer, we bring our offerings. We bring our wealth, our gifts of money. We bring our time, our talents, all the things that we can share for God's glory. We pray, Lord God, help us to use our power wisely for the good of all creation. May we share all that you have given us for love of the world and to honour your name. And hear us as we bring all our praying together and say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. So we leave this, our time of worship, knowing that we have encountered the living God who supplies all that we need. May we go to all that awaits us in the world, knowing the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with us all today and always. Amen.